Hello there, Kim Rowe here. This is my first time coming on here um, with Farmhouse Paint officially. So I wanted to, I was super excited about it. I'm actually at my shop on a very, very rainy day. And um, so I have a little piece here that I thought would be a fun thing to play with. And um, I actually did a workshop a few weekends ago and a couple of my customers, I'm just going to be sharing this so just bear with me for one second, um, a couple of my uh, customers were painting in Sage Shadow and I had never used it before so I was very excited about um, using it on this piece when I, f I found this piece yesterday. Um, so let me just go on here, sorry I just want to make sure that I'm getting this on the um, right place. Um, so if you are popping on, if you're watching, please um, let us know where you're watching from. Um, hold on one second here. I just want to get this. There we go. I want it to be official. So, um, yeah, let me know where you're watching from. It is very rainy here today, and it's actually pretty warm, um, but it's getting cold. So we will be getting down very cold tonight. Um, which uh, is not my favorite, but um, okay, I think I'm on, I think I'm on there. So welcome, um, I'm going to watch over here so I can see your comments. If you have comments, just let me know and I can see them. If you have any questions, if you've painted with Sage Shadow, let me know. Um, it's, it's a great, it's a great color and I had never really um, uh, thought about green before because I'm kind of a blue person and so when I saw this color I was just very excited about it. Okay perfect. I just wanted to get my other camera ready here for you so we can get the best um, angles. Okay so again my name is Kim Rowe and I'm from outside of Philadelphia and my business name is called For the Nest but I'm actually I have a shop in Downingtown at Downingtown Vintage. That's why I'm wearing my my Downingtown Vintage shirt. So um, thanks for watching today and I'm going to be playing with Sage Shadow and some um, transfers. Now um, I'll show you, I'm going to move the camera down in a minute, but I got this piece yesterday and if anybody's ever seen these, um, they're kind of, I think they're called an old, like a pie, um, a thing that you would pull your pies on. It's like a little stand and um, let me switch to the other camera here so you can kind of see. There we go. Um, so, oops, I'm upside down. <laughs> there we go. So uh, anyway, this is a cool little piece and I thought, I'm not really a baker, but um, I thought it would be great for a plant stand. So let me, um, let me turn my volume down over here because I don't want to hear myself. There we go, okay. Um, so what I did was, I'm using Sage Shadow, I took this, first of all I cleaned this piece really well um, with um, the Farmhouse Cleaner. It's a great product if you've never used it before. Um, it comes in a package and you mix the, the powder with hot water. And then I cleaned it with that, scrubbed it really well, and then I used a wet clean rag with just plain water, wiped off the residue of the cleaner so it's got a really clean, nice, smooth surface ready to paint. Um, the farmhouse paint, you don't need to prime it or anything. So I put a top, I just put one coat on here to get started so that when we go to the second coat, um, this one won't have as long to dry. Um, but here's the color I'm using, it's called Sage Shadow. And what I did is I poured off some into my tray here. So let me move this out of the way. I just have this tray here with my paints. So I'm just going to put this first coat on um, and if you have any questions, I'll try and uh, keep track and see if you have any questions, let me know. So, um, but this paint goes on, it's got, it's a resin acrylic based paint, so it's got a great soft, nice um, matte finish and um, it covers really well and I have been loving it and so have my customers here in Downingtown, we've been um, selling it like crazy. So. I was um, super busy 
the past few weeks. My dad had back surgery. I'm the oldest child, so I've been running around with my mom and dad, and he's doing great, thank goodness. But um, anyway, it's just been a busy week and a couple weeks, and so I really was wanting to do this earlier, but just with everything leading up to that, just hadn't gotten to it. So I'm using um, an S50 Klingon brush, but um, I also use the, I meant to grab my um, farmhouse brush because there's, there's one that I really love and I left it at home, but it's called the Grip, and it's just a great little brush. Um, but anyway, um, so I'm just gonna put this first coat on here. And as you can see, it's going on pretty good and covering pretty well. Um, what I'll do is, I'm not going to do the underneath part just for the sake of time today, but I'll just do um, the main parts here and these round areas so that we can get to our decorating part. Actually, what I'm going to do here is, let me just turn this down a little bit. I'm actually going to put the second coat on this part right here just so this dries while we're getting to the rest of it. So you can see... And I just put this first coat on probably about 30 minutes ago. It wasn't very long ago. Um, it dries pretty quickly. So, there we go. And that covered really well. And so this little piece in the back moves these little, um, kind of like little wooden plates. But I thought, wouldn't this be cute for a... Um, a plant stand. I'm not a baker, but I am a plant girl, so with my succulents or air plants or something like that. So, all right. So I'm going to put the first coat on here, covering up the front. This is probably, I would say this is probably from the 70s, 60s, 70s maybe. Could be older, because um, I know these have been around a long time, but I think this might have been one that was kind of made, um, I don't know, there's no date on it, so it's hard to say, but I got this yesterday at a thrift shop for $12, so I was very excited about it. It's funny what gets people excited, right? Some people, this would not excite them at all, but some of us who are people that like to uh, upcycle and paint, that's what gets us happy, right? So let me see, let me move this back just a little bit so you can see. So I'm here in our workshop at our, at our um, Downingtown Vintage. We have a workshop space here. So we teach classes and um, all kinds of classes. One that I'm doing actually, let me show you what we're doing this week. Um, we're doing bottles. And so if you saw me yesterday, I was painting this. This is creamy linen. Um, and this is a jar from Costco. But what we're going to be doing is uh, people have some ornate bottles that they're going to be bringing in. And we're going to be using um, different colors of farmhouse paint. I don't know if you have a favorite. Let me see what the comments here. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Yes, Sage Shadow is a great color. Yeah, um, but if you want to leave a comment, is what is your favorite color? For me, it would be very hard for me to pick one. And it's funny because as I paint, I get new favorites, but um, I really have used ancient gray a lot, and I know it sounds kind of boring because it's gray, but um, it is, it's a pretty color, And um, but my new color that I'm going to actually be using is, um, I'm going to try it on my dresser in my house, is indigo, so I'm excited about that. Um, it's, it's a, it, I love, I'm a navy, like I said before, I'm a blue person, I love blue, um, and I have a lot of navy in my house, but, and I was thinking of using the old navy, but the indigo has that grayish tone to it, so I was like, oh, that might be the perfect color for my bedroom. So, I'm going to get my sprayer out, and my sister and her husband have been living with us, they moved in um, 15 months ago, and then they moved to Pennsylvania from Charlotte. So we've been kind of, um, kind of like forest company in my house because all my kids are out of the house. Um, so they're actually moving this weekend, and then I'm going to have my painting space back. So I'm excited about that. Although they're only moving ten minutes down the road, so it's 
they're not moving far, which is nice because it's been nice having them. So people always comment like, how could you have them live there for that long? But we've all gotten along great and they actually cook. So that's been nice. So I am not going to do the whole back, like I said, because for the sake of time, I want to um, get to, but this up here where I did already is already dry. So it dries really quick. I'm just going to try and put a second coat over that quickly. And then I'm going to hit, um, hit it with the, my, I have my heat gun here just to speed up the process a little bit. Um, so, and I'll see if we can um, get this. Well, let me just hit this here a little bit. And let, we'll hit that with the heat gun. So let me grab that and we'll just dry it quickly. And I'll turn it like this. Sometimes you can actually see it drying as you're... So you want to do thin coats as you're doing this, not real thick. Um, because when it dries, if there's any drips or anything, this stuff dries really hard. So just... Um, you know, do a thin coat and then you go back to the dry so fast and put your second coat on. It just makes a nice, really smooth finish and such a nice matte finish. Um, so if, you're, if you like matte, this is the perfect paint for you. And also, you don't need a top coat. So that's what I love about it because if we're going, we're going to be using some transfers and it's best to use a transfer it, they recommend using it um, if you're doing like anything that does not have a top coat, you have to put that top coat on. So farmhouse paint, if you don't have to do that. You skip that step and it really, um, you know, saves, saves time. So, there I got a little down here. So this top one is very close to being dry, but while this is drying, I'm going to show you the transfer. So what you want to do is, when you're deciding on your transfers, let me move the paint out of the way. Um, I'm going to be using, these are, let me turn my camera down so you can kind of see. Um, so I've got, the other thing that I thought too is, this was another thing that I was going to add, and I may add this later, is you can even decoupage um, over this too. I just don't have my... Um, my top coat to put the decoupage on but some of these like bugs and things like that would be so cute this is the recycled um, papers um, so what I have here is two different sets of transfers one is from etymology these are from IOD um, and then the other one is ferns and fronds um, and I've already cut them out but they come in um, sheets oh and the other one I have here is from uh, this brocante. So this is how they come. They come in a pad and um, when you turn them on the back you can see you know what you're getting in the pack. So this one has a lot of florals and bugs and birds and um, things like that and so um, I'm going to be doing some of that on here because with the plant theme I thought it'd be fun to do. Um, so here's the bumblebee that I'm going to use and Sometimes you may want to line your transfers up straight or whatever, and that's what is helpful when you have these um, grid lines. I'm not going to necessarily worry too much about that. Um, and hello, Debbie. Welcome to the group. I'm glad you're here. I'm new too, so, <laughs> so that's good. Um, so here's uh, the bird, which I love. My sister has gotten me into birds living at the house. In fact, I have a funny story to tell. She, we were helping, they, they settled on the house about a week ago, and so we were, my husband and I were over there painting with her and her husband, just doing a couple little projects before they move in, and um, this is what she, so if you know me, I'm like one to be running and doing and painting and cleaning and whatever, and she was, um, uh-oh, oh, okay, sorry, you lost me for a second. Anyway, she was putting together her bird feeder, so... Um, yeah, that's what she was doing, and, and um, I thought that's hysterical because the ground is frozen, and she can't really even um, put the thing in the ground. 
Okay, sorry, it looks like I'm, I've lost. Hopefully you can see me. It looks like it's frozen. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh-oh. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's take this off. Let's go back to here. And we'll do that one. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know why I froze up. Let's see if I come back with something with my phone. Okay. Let me just see. I'm waiting to make sure that I'm okay here. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to work from my iPad and I'll show you. I'll just pull this down. So anyway, this is, this is getting dry. I'm going to do my second coat now because this is with the hitting it with the dryer worked pretty well. And again, like I said, just make sure you don't have any drips or anything anywhere because um, it'll dry hard and it won't, it'll be, you have to sand it and it kind of can be a little tricky because it's just such a nice finish. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's move down to here. I'm gonna put the second coat on this part and We'll hit it with the dryer one more time before we... <clears throat> now the other thing too you can do is if you want to distress um, your pieces and let a little of the natural wood show through, I like to do that. Do that sooner than later because um, it's going to be easier to wipe off um, while the paint is not quite cured, um, if that makes sense. And this one down here is still wet, so I'm going to let, let me just dry that a little bit. Um, let me turn my camera so you can see me. So this is cooking up the color pretty well. It's very um, true to, sometimes it's hard to get an actual picture of the color, but I feel like it's looking pretty good on here. Hopefully you can see me okay now. Sorry about the freezing. I'm not sure what was going on. I'm working on getting my um, workspace back in order at my house, and um, then I'll be doing trying to be doing weekly live videos. So you can stay tuned if you don't follow me on For the Nest. Um, check it out there. I did a video yesterday of the jar um, using the creamy linen. So that was fun. And it was using a jar that I got from Costco. So the funny thing is, I had many people commenting about the tea <laughs> and the jar that I use. If you haven't tried the tea, I'm kind of addicted to it. It's, um, and the jar is a really cool jar. This one here is still pretty wet. But I know up here I can at least get started with one of my transfers. So you want to make sure this is dry before you put a transfer on it because it could, you know, pull the paint off because you're kind of rubbing with it pretty hard. And I am going to paint the back part of this. Um, but even up here I thought it would be really cute to add a little bug or something. So let me just dry that. The other great thing, because it, um, there's a built-in top coat with this. Um, you can glaze right over this as well. So there's some great, um, um, like, I've used the tea stain. There's um, the stumble one that you can actually mix the paints and kind of make your own color. Um, so lots of great tools in, in the farmhouse line. Um, and we're also going to be using the rain coat, top coat on this, because I just figured with putting plants on this, um, you know, it's going to get wet. And so the rain coat is actually a top coat that's an exterior. You can use it for interior as well, but it's an exterior top coat. So if you're painting, you know, like a flower pot or something like a chair or something that's going to go outside on your front porch, um, the rain coat would be a great... Um, a great top coat for that. I had a friend who painted a, um, a vanity and, uh, in her bathroom and she 
you don't necessarily have to use it for the inside, but she just wanted to make extra, extra sure, so she um, used that. Okay. Just a little bit down here so I can add the second coat. And then we'll be good to go. But this is all dry, so I can really add my second coat there too. Okay, but look how beautiful, if you can see how that is turning out. Let me just see if there's any questions over here. Oopsie, hold on one second. Um, hold on. Okay, there we go. Oh, hello from Calgary, Canada. That's great. Glad you're here. Hopefully, um, hopefully you can enjoy some farmhouse paint if you haven't already. Okay, so let me add, I'm going to grab a little bit more out of my little thing here. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge here where I missed the second coat. Although, I, I'm thinking about um, probably putting a little uh, distressing in here. And we're... I even think, I don't know, maybe I'll add a, a little um, a glaze or something to pull out these colors. And when I do that, I love to use the cheesecloth, the um, material that we have, and it comes in small packets, um, and so it's great for doing glazing or um, any kind of um, staining or anything like that. So, if you haven't tried that. Um, I have a workshop coming up here in Downingtown, and then I'm going to be doing a few online as well, so just stay tuned for those if you're ever interested. Okay, so let me just see here. I think I missed. So it, and the other thing that it does is it really levels nicely. Um, so that's good. Like I said, I'm going to come back and, and do the major parts of this, but I just wanted to get this part done so we can, I can show you the um, transfer. So, okay, so here is good. Um, so let me, oh, let me grab my transfer tool. I think I forgot to grab that. Hold on one second. everything ready but okay so I think what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to put on the um, bird because I want the bird to kind of show the most I just love it I mean it's so cute and um, and the colors work perfectly with this so when you get your transfers they come on it they have a backing to them and so you just you know once you remove the backing they're sticky on the back and um, Let's see here, I'm going to see a drip over there. Okay, so I'm going to place this. Once you have it placed, which I'm going to make the little branch go off to the edge there, and then I'm going to have these leaves just come down over the edge. So once you have it in the place where you want it, just give it a little um, pressure it'll hold it in place and then you're going to use the little stick that comes with it and just um, rub it. Now I'm kind of doing this from the wrong angle. I'm going to come over here and stand up. Um, and I like to start from one end and you'll see it start to release and then you can kind of um, move it along as you go. So you may have seen me do this yesterday with the, the jar. I like to, and this hole is kind of in the way, but you want to try and get like a little um, bubble and push it, and then that'll release the um, transfer. But like I was saying, this is, the uh, farmhouse paint is so perfect for using with transfers because it has the built-in top coat, and so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, getting that top coat put on before you put your transfer on. Hear it, it's a little bubble, 
I'm kind of catching as I push this along. And then it also kind of lightens the color too. So it's kind of like a crackle. You can kind of hear as it goes. But this color is so perfect for this um, bird. I'm just very excited about it. The bird goes well with the sage shadow, is what I mean to say. Okay, now this is a little tricky here because I want it to go down over the edge. So I'm just going to see if I can rub it that way over the. There's like a little lip on here. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but. Now when you lift up, you can kind of see whether it released, and I'm looking like it did. So then I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to give it a good um, rubbing. Oh no, did I freeze again? Oh no, okay. Um, so, let me show you how it looks here. I can lift this up so you can see. See how cute that is? Yeah, thanks Sandy, the color is pretty. This is um, exactly what I wanted. So as you can see, the back part of this I did not paint yet, so I'm going to do that later, but I wanted to at least um, show you just a little bit of how to kind of get your um, base coat on and then, you know, a transfer with this. So now I could do probably one more. Let me just see if this is, yeah, this is dry in here. So I'm thinking, look what I got here. I got the bee, I got the butterfly. I'm trying to think of what kind of goes. I think, oh, and I also have this dragonfly. Hmm, that might be, oh, you know what? I'm going to put, there's little bugs. I think I'll put a bug up there. And maybe I'll do a dragonfly here, and then this yellow butterfly really goes nicely with the colors of that bird. So I want it to kind of coordinate. So I think I'll stick that here. And again, I'll just press down and same with the, butter, the dragonfly, kind of get them in the right spot, and then I just put a little pressure on it. Then I'm going to take my stick. And again, oops, that one went very fast. Just start at one edge and then you pull that um, bubble across. Sometimes they can take a little bit longer, but, um, but if you get a good start on it, then it just peels right off like that. And then, again, I'm just gonna take this off and rub it on. Now I will put, um, like I said, I'm gonna use um, I'm going to let this dry just a little bit more, and then I'm going to put the rain coat as a top coat on this um, because um, I'm going to be putting plants on this, and so I want it to uh, kind of be resistant to water. Um, and also, you want, to you want to put a sealer over your transfers. So I always seal them, unless they're on glass or something like that. Um, I wouldn't put the sealer on glass. But if I'm using them on this, I definitely would. Let me just turn this down so you can see the butterflies. So um, anyway, that is very cute. I'm very happy with it. This is really dry up here, so I probably could go ahead and put the sealer on it. Although I think I might just distress around the edges. And sometimes I even distress the, um, the transfer itself. But I don't think I'm going to do that because the details in these things are so amazing. Let me hold it up. But look at that color, that sage shadow color. Isn't it so pretty? It's like the perfect green and the perfect name for that color, sage shadow. It's just perfect. So anyway, that's, I think that's it for me. I, I don't want to, um, I, I just want to, let me just see if there's any other questions. Hello, Lisa from upstate, snowy upstate New York. Yes, I am sure. I remember my brother, my youngest brother, um, was moving to upstate New York in October, and my parents, my husband and I, and I think my middle son all went to help him, and it started to snow as we were moving him in, and we had to drive home that day, so we ended up leaving, getting stuck on the New Jersey Turnpike in a snowstorm. 
So I know you guys get snow up there. Believe me, I do know that. So anyway, we're not getting snow today. We're just getting a lot of rain. Um, but thank you for joining me and thank you for um, allowing me to come on Farmhouse Paint um, page to the Farmhouse Paint people. I've really enjoyed um, getting this paint. I've enjoyed sharing it with my customers. And um, if you have any questions, um, you can. I'll keep checking the comments here. And um, also, if you are in the area and anywhere outside of Philadelphia, come see me. Um, and we have a full selection of all the paints here. I try and keep all the colors in stock because um, there's just so many great colors and it's hard to choose which one you like. So um, if I can, I will come back on here and, and do this again. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you're able to find something fun and, and paint. Get a jar, even get a jar like this and um, paint it and paint the top and you're good to go. I did put the... Um, uh, raincoat on top of this. I sealed it because I'm thinking if I wanted to use this in a kitchen or anything like that. Um, but you could seal it with anything um, because of the transfer you wanted to seal it. So this is from the Brocant set as well. So anyway, have a wonderful day. Stay warm and dry and um, let me know if you have any questions. Bye!